stress physically affects the body. It causes physical reactions. But when you expose the body to those day in and day out, they can be toxic. Yeah. I like being able to do that. I like being able to step right off the back porch and shoot and then not pick up my brass. <laughs> oh, can I just say that? That is fucking awesome, all right? Not having to pick up my brass is probably the biggest thing about being out of the military that I could possibly say. I don't have to please call the range because it's my fucking range, okay? And this brass is staying right here. Maybe not this shotgun shell because the lawnmower will hit it, but that brass, that's staying there. And that's awesome. Three months of my life was spent turning me from a civilian to a Marine. I spent the next 21 years being that Marine. I spent one week learning how to be a civilian again. Uh, that says a lot, right? A lot of people take a while to downshift from sustained combat. And PTSD happens a lot of times because we experience things in combat that are so out of the ordinary, that are so violent, that are so traumatic. We have nothing to compare them to in our previous life. And so what happens is, is you remove yourself from the traumatic experience, you'll leave combat, you'll come back here, but that incident is still open in your brain and you haven't processed it and you haven't digested it and they get stuck. And it's unfortunate that a lot of the symptoms of having some of these traumatic issues is that you tend to push people away. You know that people around you love you and support you and want you to improve, but you're so busy self-destructing, they just can't stand to be around you. And I can't say how many times wives are the ones that will go to the command and say, my husband has a problem, long before the individual ever does. We do such an injustice in many cases to how we handle this topic by not having more senior people admit that there's nothing wrong with seeking help. We're saving more lives now that we wouldn't have been able to save even 15, 20 years ago, but we've been so slow in treating the mental issues that all of us have come home with to some degree or another. Some of the things that affected me was just um, a lot of the side effects of long-term exposure to combat stress, but also just extended exposure to adrenaline over months and months that often comes with uh, sustained combat operations. Things like irritability, um, anger, frustration, you know, short fuse, not wanting to be around large groups of people, um, things of that nature. Adrenaline is a sister to stress, and adrenaline carries with it a nice chemical cocktail. It feels good in the moment, but too much of it, like stress, can be toxic. It's not a military-only problem. If you witness a horrific car accident, or more importantly, you are part of a horrific car accident, or you witnessed a murder, or, you know, God forbid, you were one of these people who's been in one of these mass shootings and survived. And that trauma is no different than the service member who witnesses the Humvee in front of him getting blown up. And considering it's a universal problem that spans and transcends languages and cultures, why we haven't put forth more effort into finding a detection treatment protocols is beyond me. Trauma doesn't give a shit what gender you are. It doesn't give a shit what race you are, whether you're military or civilian. And that's unfortunate.